Amen. I'm watching Thomas get braver and bolder for the Lord, and I love it, and I love it, I do love it. We've had a lot of laughter tonight, haven't we? Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the laughter that you've allowed us to have. I thank you for the laughter that you've given us and that you've equipped us with and that you've made available to those of us who can see it as a gift. And Lord, I thank you for what your word tells us about laughter. And Lord, I just, I can't thank you enough for it. I believe it's a certainly a very necessary part of our lives and Father I believe it's becoming a lost art in the world of Christianity those who call themselves children of God bless this time tonight Lord in Jesus name Amen, Amen. you know I believe that God has provided me uh, just a, a, a ton 
of happiness and a ton of laughter. And my wife and I, we laugh together. She laughs at me. <laughs> she laughs at her own jokes perpetually. She, she's always proud of the evil deeds that she pulls off and laughs at. And she can be walking through the house and just she'll see something that memorializes one of those deeds and she'll just start laughing. And I have no idea what she's laughing about. But it makes her day better. You know, contrary, and we've talked about this, but I thought, yeah, the Lord laid it on my heart to share this. It's a light night. And contrary to what some say or think God did, God gave the gift of laughter. It's his gift. He gave it. Statistically, uh, I once made a note that a child laughs about 400 times a day. And uh, <clears throat> then the average adult about 15 times a day. What happened? Well, we know what happened. Responsibility happened. Sin has happened. All of those things that, that get in the way of laughter and rob us of laughter. And, you know, I think it's either our own sin or the sin we're battling that robs us of laughter. So I think of that. And sometimes when I run into one of those crusty people that, that come into church and I think you shouldn't be laughing in church, that that's some terrible thing. Uh, I want to look at them and say, well, what sin has beset you? <laughs> uh, I don't do that. But, but I'm telling you, I'm, sure, I'm telling you I want to, but I don't do that. And... Uh, uh, but that's usually what robs us of our smile is some sin that we are involved in or some sin that we're battling against in our lives. Um, <clears throat> with some becoming a Christian, uh, it, it, it deprives them of laughter even more. And I don't, I don't get that. But it's very predominant in the world of Christianity. Um, And I say, well, how do we call that wrong? Because there's a lot of people that will argue that point with you. Uh, as a matter of fact, in our days of praise, that point was taken up a while back. That, that uh, you know, laughing in church and stuff like that. I mean, that was, and it's like, I'm thinking, this guy must have smoked something before he wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not operating on the Holy Spirit too well. Uh, Because I believe it to be just the other way around. And I believe that God created laughter. So how dare we call that wrong? Too many sad sack Christians. Who wants to be a sad sack? Yeah. Or a fuddy-duddy. <laughs> yeah, or a fuddy-duddy. Right. Um, <clears throat> who wants to do that? It's, it's so many... There, there are so many physical... <coughs> And so many spiritual benefits to laughter. Medical science says laughter produces hormones and, and, and the adrenal glands and just all of these different aspects that, 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 that facilitate healing, reduce, even reduce inflammation. So if your back or your neck or your leg or your knees are bothering you, maybe you need to laugh a little bit more. <laughs> and... Uh, Laughter enhances relaxation. You ever have a good laugh and just sit back and go, oh. <laughs> I mean, doctors even say it helps the digestive system to laugh. And we've all heard about the, you know, smile in your face will crack. But um, turn to Proverbs chapter 17. And it's amazing how Psalms and Proverbs and the Old Testament, the things that we find, how, how all these years later, medical science has bared out what the scriptures say. That we already had the answer. It's kind of like, 
you know, in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and one of the reasons he did that is to find out if the earth was round or... And if they would have just read Isaiah chapter 40, he would have seen that it is he who sitteth on the circle of the earth. Could have saved a whole lot of problems. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> in, in, in Proverbs chapter 17, look at verse 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. That's laughter. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But a, broken, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. That's what you want to tell somebody that goes, what are you laughing at church for? <laughs> the old dry bag of bones, be quiet. No. <laughs> this, this is over three, this is 3,000 years ago, the word of God's telling us that, that a merry heart is like a medicine. And, and, this is God's word telling us that. So don't tell me you can't laugh in the house of God. It's a gift that he's given us. Um, if you can't laugh, I believe if I'm looking at this scripture right, theologically, and, and, and in the short study of looking at this, this scripture says, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. So, what a bad testimony. The dry bones displays a broken spirit. That doesn't mean like, a broke, like breaking a horse. That means broken like it needs fixed. Like it needs fixed. And that's how I really do look at people that say, you know, you shouldn't laugh like that in church. And I think your spirit's broken. It needs fixed. Because that's what God's word tells me. But when we, we are, if we're seen with those dry bones, that broken spirit, but yet we proclaim our righteousness in Christ, then, you know, I can just imagine when somebody looks at us, oh, you're a Christian. You poor thing, I'm sorry. You must be so sad. No life at all. You must have been at the bottom of the barrel. That's right. Not anymore. And that's the great answer. And not anymore. When you got saved, you got, rid, you got rid of those dry bones, or you should have anyhow, and you're taking advantage of that merry heart that the Lord has given. And, and if you don't have a merry heart after you get saved, you're not dwelling on the things of God. If you're dwelling on the things of God, you're going to have a merry heart. And, and it, the, it, it may have that broke that bottom of the barrel like brother just said it may have been but that, and that may have been what brought you to Christ but once you got there he took all that away that's a reason to smile Christianity should not suppress or push that flavor out of our life it, it, it should enhance it uh, even more turn to Genesis chapter 18 with me So guys, when you're feeling a little blue at home, it's rainy outside, it's gloomy looking, do something at the wife's expense to get a laugh. <laughs> then tell them the pastor said to do that. <laughs> Look at Genesis chapter 18. Uh, in chapter 18, and go to verse 9 with me. Here we see, and, and they said unto him, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. Uh, this is this is this is the this is the pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ and the two other angels with him. And they're asking hey, Abraham, where's your wife at? And behold, in the tent. And he said, Well, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. This is the Lord talking to him, by the way. And, and, and lo, Sarah, thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. And now Abraham and Sarah were old 
and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the man, manner of women, i.e., she was just too cotton picking old <laughs> to even think about having a child. Um, and, and he was even older. So it's kind of like my wife and I. <laughs> just the other way around. <laughs> Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself. She's inside that tent. She laughed, but she didn't do it out loud. The scripture says she laughed within herself. And she laughed within herself because she heard this. And after saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure in my Lord being old also? In other words, you see me? Look at him. What are you talking about? <laughs> We're going to have a child. Yeah, right. <laughs> but she laughed at that. She laughed at that. And, 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 and look at verse 13. And the Lord said unto Abraham, wherefore did Sarah laugh? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. She's inside the tent. She's laughing within herself. She's not, it's not an audible laugh. And the Lord's outside going, wherefore did Sarah laugh? And she's probably like, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. Uh-oh. But you, do you really think that she knew that that was the Lord out there? I don't think she did. I really don't think that she did. And that gave her a laugh. And it did, scripturally, it gave her a laugh. And, and the scripture says, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall of a surety bear a child which am old? Which am old? Look at verse 14 and 15. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At that time appointed, I will return unto thee. He's talking to Abraham. According to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not. Because she didn't laugh out loud, she laughed within herself. But she said, I laughed not. <laughs> For she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. He knew, thou didst laugh. Hmm. I, want you to, I want you to turn back one chapter to chapter 17 and look at verse 15. And God said unto Abraham, as for Sarai, that's before he told her to call her Sarah, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. You with me there? And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations, kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and did what? He laughed. He laughed. And said in his heart, shall it, and said in his heart, he fell on his face and laughed, but he said in his heart, shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall, share, and, and shall Sarah, that is 90 years old, bear? Now look at verse 19. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son, indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. Who named that child? Thou shalt call his name Isaac. And if you do a Hebrew word study on the word name Isaac, you know what it means? Laughter. Laughter laughter and was that child a gift and could you imagine Sarah and Abraham going to a new neighborhood meeting the neighbors in the Hebrew tongue in the Hebrew tongue yeah this is our son laughter <laughs> they have a story to tell now don't they and it's, a, and it's a blessed story it's a gift story all from God all how through laughter through laughter I don't believe God is upset with us when we show off his gifts and we give him the glory for it. I really don't. I believe it's a merry heart that he has given us and it is like a medicine. It's a wonderful gift to us. It's a gift that I think is underrated. A gift I think that uh, does a whole lot for us uh, much more than we always understand. And this is, what the, this is what the Lord really does. I want you to look at Psalm chapter 30.
You know, that old dry bones person has a broken spirit. We saw that in the Word of God. And this is what the Lord, I believe, really does. And when you're looking at Psalm chapter 3, look at verse 11 with David. In verse 11, thou hast turned for me my what? God has turned his mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with what? Gladness. 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 God fixed his spirit. And that's the fruit of that fix that we're seeing. And this should always be the result. Look at verse 12. To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. My glory shall sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Because he turned his mourning to gladness. He gave him the gift of joy, the gift of laughter, to the extent that he danced about it. He didn't sit on his hands and go. <laughs> We're going to close out with Luke chapter 6. This is very applicable to the time that we live in, the job that we're doing for God. In Luke chapter 6, verse 22. Verse 22, Jesus says, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company. Have you ever had anybody that didn't want you in their midst because of the way you believe? They may be people that really like you. They may be family. But when they're in their crowd, they don't want you anywhere near them. Yeah. And shall, and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. But watch what God tells us in the next verse. Rejoice ye in that day. Rejoice in that day. He doesn't say to sit on your hands and get all dry bones. He said rejoice. Smile. Laugh. <laughs> Dance, Adolf. <laughs> For behold, your reward is great in heaven. Right there is a hat hanger. There's a time to laugh. There's a time to rejoice. There's a time to dance. For our reward is great in heaven. He didn't tell us to wait until then. He said, in that day when that happens to you, rejoice then. Rejoice then. And let me back up to verse 21. Blessed are ye that hunger now, right now, that hunger right now. Hunger for what? He's not talking about food. We went over that in, the, in, our, in our Sunday school teaching. He's not talking about food. Blessed are you who hunger. Hunger for what? That righteousness that only Christ can provide to us, which is an everyday hunger. For you shall be filled. You shall be filled. That's something to celebrate about. Blessed are you that weep now. Listen, we had a lot of laughter tonight. But inside we weep. And we weep for others that we're trying to get the gospel to. Others that we know are lost. We mourn, for our, we mourn over our own sin. And we mourn over the results of our own sin. So we weep and we mourn. And Jesus says, for ye shall what? Laugh. Laugh. Ye shall laugh. He's not talking about when we get to heaven. He's talking about the here and now. For we shall laugh. So when you all run into those fuddy-duddies that think you shouldn't be laughing in God's house, tell them not to stand in the wind because they might their old dry bones might blow away. <laughs> Brother Adolph, you want to come up here and lead us? And Well, I think one verse will suffice tonight. We'll get the folks on their way. If you need to pray and come, you come. If you need someone to pray with you, we'll do that too.